it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Welcome to Branch Together. My name is Jared, and today we're finishing the Gospel of John. We'll be in John chapter 21. Four weeks, about a whole month together on John. So congratulations if you've stuck with us through this entire book. If you've missed a lot, today's a great day to start. We'll finish up John, and then you can join us uh, for the next uh, smaller books as we go through the uh, epistles of John. Before we dive in, I'm going to take a moment and pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your servant, John, that he uh, walked the path following your son, Jesus, in his life on earth. We thank you for his witness, for his testimony, for his gospel, for his letters, that he was close to you, um, that he remembered well uh, what you said, what you taught, and what you did, and that these words were shared with us, that they can still inspire us and move us today. Lord, I pray today as we finish this book, that this book would stay with us, that some of the words, some of the teachings, some of the actions you did, uh, hopefully they've been inspiring us over the last four weeks and moving in us, but Today might be a day where we take some stock of what it means to follow you, what it means to know you, and that today we might move forward in next steps in faith and growing closer to you and living out your love in this world. It's in your name we pray. Amen. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called Twin, Nathaniel from Cana of Galilee, Zebedee's sons and two others of his disciples were together. I'm going fishing, Simon Peter said to them. We're coming with you, they told him. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When daybreak came, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Friends, Jesus called to them. You don't have any fish, do you? No, they answered. Cast the net on the right side of the boat, he told them, and you'll find some. So they did, and they were unable to haul it in because of the large number of fish. The disciple, the one Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tied his outer clothing around him, for he had taken it off and plunged into the sea. Since they were not far from land, about a hundred yards away, the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish lying on it and bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus told them. So Simon Peter climbed up and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Come and have breakfast, Jesus told them. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they'd eaten breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said to him, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs, he told told him. A second time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he said to him, you know that I love you. Shepherd my sheep, he told him. He asked him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that he was asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep, Jesus said. Truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you would tie your belt and walk wherever you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you and carry you where you don't want to go. He said this to indicate by which kind of death Peter would glorify God. After saying this, he told him, follow me. So Peter turned around and saw the disciple. Jesus loved following him. The one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and asked, Lord, who is the one who's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? If I want him to remain until I come, Jesus answered, what is that to you? As for you, follow me. So this rumor spread to the brothers and sisters that his disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not tell him he would not die. But if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if every one of them were written down, I suppose not even the world itself could contain the books 
that would be written. So John ends the book by saying that there are many stories he left out. And if we told all the stories, a book couldn't contain it. So that means John had to make some tough choices. Uh, Which stories were the most important for the first listeners and for us today? He chooses to close with these final stories. So he's shrunk the life of Jesus down and there's so many more stories he could tell. And he, he's kind of got this into these 21 chapters, which is really, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 pages of text in, in our world today. And so it's important to think, all right, these stories must be the most important ones. And these stories today, they must be super important because these are the stories that John leaves us with. So uh, Jesus has died. He has risen again. And he comes to his followers one more time. Now, these are followers who have denied him, forsaken him. These are broken down, downtrodden, poor in spirit people who can't get it right. And they haven't been able to get it right for a few years now. But now the resurrection has happened. Now the Holy Spirit has been unleashed in these followers' lives. This Holy Spirit that Jesus has talked about. And Jesus comes back to Peter. Specifically, he comes back to Peter, and we, we see him on the, on the side of the lake as, as they all come running in. But he comes back and he talks to Peter, the one who denied him before the death and resurrection. The one who denied before the power of the Spirit has broken into his life. The denier, the one who walked away, the one who uh, couldn't even admit to knowing Jesus. Now, I want us to listen again to these concluding words in John, the words that John speaks to the one Peter who had been his, one of his betrayers. This is verse 15. When they had eaten breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said to him. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. He told him a second time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he said to him. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, shepherd, my sheep. Jesus asks him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that he asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Then Jesus said, feed my sheep. Then there's a couple of verses where he explains the manner in which Peter's going to die. Uh, and then it says, after saying this, he told him, follow me. Follow me, some of those concluding words. Now, John claims that Jesus Christ is the word that called creation into being. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the bread of life. He is living water. John claims that uh, the Holy Spirit will come and empower and convict and console and teach. And Jesus Christ is also the crucified one and the risen one. Jesus Christ in the power of the Spirit is the resurrected one. And then he gives his Spirit. And he says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And as I have loved you, so ought you to love one another. And then these last, and then all of that, this whole book comes together in these last words on the beach, standing on the edge of the water. The always chaotic waters of life. Jesus comes to Peter and the apostles right in the midst of their day jobs. And Jesus says to them, and I believe he says these words to you today, so hear them. He says to them, he says to Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. That means then care and love for one another. Do you love me? Then feed my lambs. Do you love me? Then care and love for one another. If you love me, Follow me. Love just as I have loved. Be sent just as I was sent by the Father. These words were written so that we might believe in Jesus and so that we might live out what we believe by loving as he has loved us and by following Jesus. Believe in him today. Follow him today. Go as he was sent and love as he has loved you. That's the end of John for Branch Together. But you can keep reading it. You can keep looking at it. 
Let it stay with you. Uh, Let the words of Jesus take root in your heart. Let his actions take root in your heart. Choose to follow him. Choose to believe. Choose to love as he's loved and to go as he has gone to you. All right, that's it. Join us next time as we begin the Epistle of John.